now we can work on adding the substituents to uh, the chair cyclohexane. And remember that uh, cyclohexane has six carbons. Um, each carbon can have or has two substituents, be it um, just a hydrogen or some other group. So we need to put 12 things around the cyclohexane and get them in the correct orientation. We're going to start with the axial substituents. And remember that axials always go straight up or straight down. Okay, so I think the easiest thing to do is find a point on your ring. Okay, so um, let's just find a point on one of our chairs that's pointed upward. So here's a corner point pointed upward. And that we're going to have an axial substituent pointed perfectly straight up in the air. Okay, now if you look at your ring, you can see that we have in addition to this first carbon, we actually have three carbons that are pointed upward, and we have three carbons pointed downward. So in fact, our up carbons all have axial substituents that point straight up. Then our carbons that have um, we consider down carbons. You can see that they're sort of at the bottom of a vertex. Those all have axial substituents that point straight down. This one in the back, because it's sort of behind this first bond, the way I'm going to draw it, I'm going to draw it partially down. I'm going to skip just a little bit and draw the rest of it, and that shows that that group's in behind this front carbon-carbon bond of the ring. Those are our six axial substituents on this chair. On our other chair, it's just as simple. We have six carbons. If you start at this point, have your up axial, and then we could go through and do the three up axials on the up carbons. And we can do the three down axials on the down carbons. Okay, now one way to actually check yourself once you've drawn these substituents in is as you progress around the ring, you're changing direction on each carbon. So if we start here, we have an up axial substituent. The next one over is down. Next one up, down, up, down. So that's just a way to double check that you have them all drawn in correctly. Now we're going to work on drawing in the equatorial substituents and again um, every chair cyclohexane is going to have six things that are equatorial. And equatorial substituents um, are really coming off kind of to the left or to the right. But they're not straight up or down. They're not perfectly left and right. They'll have just sort of a slant to them. Okay, and what we want to actually do is use the ring to help us uh, figure out exactly how the equatorial substituent should be drawn. So what I want to do is I want to start on this carbon and I need to draw in an equatorial substituent. But one thing that's a little bit interesting here is we need to draw it in, but we want to make it um, coming off the ring and parallel to um, two bonds here and here. Okay, so essentially if our equatorial substituent is on this carbon, it's parallel to the bonds um, connecting the next carbons over to um, their carbon neighbors. So my equatorial substituent, if I make it parallel with these highlighted pink bonds, it's going to look about like that. Okay, now on this next carbon, I want this one to be 
parallel to this bond and this bond. So there's that equatorial. Now on the other side, I have this carbon. That is going to be parallel to the green bonds. And this bottom carbon will be parallel to the pink bonds. Okay, now finally we have to deal with um, our carbons in the middle and those equatorial substituents they're going to be parallel to these bonds on the sides. So there's that one, there's that one. Notice that every um, equatorial substituent is parallel to two bonds on the ring. Just like with the axials, we actually have three equatorial substituents that are pointed upwards, and we have three equatorial substituents that are pointed downwards. And to check yourself, make sure they alternate. If we start here, we have one up, next carbon down, next carbon up, down, up, down. Okay, so you can go along your other chair cyclohexane and again draw in the equatorial substituents. If I want to draw this one in, I want it parallel to this bond and this bond on the ring. Okay, this one down here is also parallel to those bonds. This carbon is parallel to these. This one's the same. And then these two are parallel to these side bonds of the ring. And that's all of our equatorial substituents drawn correctly around the ring. Finally what you want to be able to do is put this all together and draw in all of your axial and equatorial substituents. So um, if we go through and do this and let's kind of classify these as axials that are pointed up and axials that are pointed down. So at all of my carbon points pointed up I'm going to have axials that are up Well, if the axials are up, the equatorials on those carbons must be down. So here's this equatorial, this equatorial, and this equatorial all pointed down. Okay, then of course I have three axials that are down here, here. And here, and then each of those carbons has an equatorial substituent that is pointed up. Here, here, and here. So now we have all 12 substituent positions um, drawn correctly around our ring.